<laughs> yes, it was lovely to have you come here and all of the region attendees to come yeah. to the conference. Welcome everybody who's just joined us. Welcome to uh, Martin, Clive, Justin, Nigel, Linda, um, oh, and Mr. Martin O'Farrell. Good evening. Lin Liz is, Linda's one of the past district directors, so we recognise. Uh, yeah. Maura, Finbar, Tomash. If you start, oh, then no, they're all pouring. It's too fast for me now. Hi, hi, hi. Tomash. Hello, hello. Going too quickly now. Let me to read everybody. <laughs> Give another minute, um, well, another yeah. thirty seconds, and we'll get get started because people Christina, are they're all pouring in. Christina, hi, welcome, Alexis. Okay, um, Zoom Master Nick, I I suggest okay. we make a start. Thank you. Welcome everyone to the the next session of the District Seventy One Sunday Leadership Series. Uh, my name is Nick Collins and I'm your um, Zoom master for the day. So before we start, I'd just like to run through some um, basic Zoom etiquette, which I'm sure you are all familiar with at this stage. Can you please ensure that you have muted your microphones um, if you're not speaking? We would welcome you to keep your videos on throughout. Um, we will be recording today's session. Our chat monitor today is Steve Campion. So if you have any questions for the question and answers or any answer or any answers to any questions from the speaker please can you submit them to him um if you have any technical issues please uh, message me directly and i will see if i in the chat function and i will help you out so i'd just like to hand you over to our host for the evening steve campion thank you very much nick and welcome everyone to this edition of the district 71 sunday leadership series if you're not familiar with who we are or what we do, Toastmasters District 71 is around 200 clubs in the UK and Ireland. We've got around three and a half thousand members. And in our clubs, we're dedicated to providing a wonderful educational experience for our members that help people develop their communication skills and develop their leadership skills. Part of developing those leadership skills is hearing from leaders in the organization and from outside the organization, leaders from around the world. And we are privileged here today. I was going to say this evening, but it's different times in different places. We are privileged here today to have one such leader. Before we move to introducing her and her topic, I would like to acknowledge the presence of a few of our dignitaries. We have past International President Ted Corcoran with us, Regional Advisor and past District Director Patricia O'Reilly, past District Director Linda Malloy, and past District Director Gerard Mannix. And apologies if I've missed anyone else here. I would also like to say, as Nick, our wonderful Zoom master pointed out, this is a live event. We want to see you on camera. We want to see you smiling and hopefully jumping for joy with such an exciting topic that we've got ahead for you. We'd also like some interaction in the sense of there is a chat function in Zoom. It's probably at the bottom of your screen or at the top of your screen. Please find it. Our speaker will be asking some questions. We want some audience interaction. And later on, there will be an opportunity for us to ask our own questions of our speaker this evening. And with that, I would like to hand over to our district director, Elizabeth Jordan, Madam District Director. Thank you very much, um, AM. Steve and welcome to everyone. This is a privilege for me to introduce our golden guest speaker. I have to tell you if I see her speaking anywhere in the world you can bet I'm going to be in that audience. Absolutely um, leadership um, personified. A Toastmaster since 1990 distinguished Toastmaster, um, Lark Doley has served as at the pinnacle of the organization. She's come up through the ranks from club right up to the pinnacle as our international president in 2018, 2019. In her professional life, she has owned a successful manufacturing business, worked as a marketing manager at Texas Instruments, and 
before her retirement, worked as a training manager for Maximus. She lives, most of you, if you see her, will see she has a lighthouse normally as her background, and that is her home. Beautiful, unique home. A lighthouse in Austin, Texas, overlooking Lake Travis. And I just heard the conversation between herself and PIP Ted, who's had the privilege of visiting this beautiful, Lark's beautiful home. The home was built by her late husband, Roger, um, in honour of her, her father-in-law, Arthur, both men, both from the UK, both seamen, people, men who love the sea. At Toastmasters, you will notice that PIP Lark almost always will wear a golden top of some kind, a golden jacket, or she will use the words golden. And I've always been impressed by this because it encapsulates what she finds great, the value she sees in Toastmasters. And tonight, it is our golden opportunity to hear her speak, our golden opportunity and our golden privilege to hear her speak. The title of our presentation is Collaborative Leadership, Toastmasters and Rotary. So with that, I would like to hand the stage over to past international president, Lark Doley. Thank you. Golden greetings, distinguished Toastmasters leaders and members, Rotarians, Rotaractors, and guests. It is truly an honor to be here today to discuss the collaborative leadership that brought about the Rotary Toastmasters Alliance. I was on the executive committee of Toastmasters International for five years, from August 2015 to August 2020. As you've heard, I served as our president from 2018 to 2019. The groundwork for the Rotary Alliance began during my time as an executive committee member, but I was honored that it came to fruition in May 2019 during my term as president. It took collaborative leadership in order for this vision of an alliance to come to fruition. I want to first find out who all of you are before we get into the details of the Rotary Toastmasters Alliance. I am so honored today to have as my chat master, Steve Campion, and he will be reviewing your responses in the Zoom chat and sharing them verbally with all of us. My first three questions, are you a member or a leader in Toastmasters? Are you a member or leader in Rotary or a Rotaractor? Or are you a member or leader in both? This is the way I want you to respond. If you are a member only of Toastmasters, I want you to type a T into the Zoom chat. If you are a member or a leader of Rotary or you are a Rotaractor, then I want you to type an R into the chat. And if you are a member of both organizations, I want you to type a B into the chat. So a T, an R, or a B. I will tell you that I am currently only a member of Toastmasters, and I want to join Rotary, trying to find the golden opportunity to join Rotary, but I am inspired by Rotary and their mission and want to become a member of both organizations. Steve, please share with us how many Toastmasters, Rotarians, Rotaractors, or both do we have in today's audience? I can see a few people still responding, but it looks like the majority of people here are Toastmasters this evening. And But I, I'm very well aware that at least one of our members here is a member of both. Thank you so much. You. The next question, have you attended club meetings of both organizations? So for this, I want you to respond with a Y for yes or an N for no. Type into the chat, why for yes or in for no. I have had the privilege to attend club meetings of both organizations. Steve, what are the responses in the chat? It looks like the majority of people are no. I can see a couple that are yeses so far, but I think some more answers are still coming in. All right. This is a golden opportunity for collaboration. After this meeting today, I want you to look up the Rotary Club near you and attend one of their meetings. The next question, have you spoken at club meetings of both organizations? And again, a Y for yes 
and an N for no. Again, I have had the privilege to speak at both Toastmasters meetings and Rotary meetings at different levels in both organizations. Steve, as they type their answers into the chat, please let me know what they are. Well, this is fascinating because I see more people are saying that they've spoken than have attended, which makes me think it's just a little bit slow for the responses <laughs> to be coming in. We've got about <laughs> six or seven people so far who said that they've spoken at both. Thanks. That's wonderful. And I agree with you. That's a little bit of a dichotomy there. Good. I'm glad that they've spoken there. And I assume, as you do, that they also attended the meeting if they spoke there. Well I done. I think technology is a little slow. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're thrilled that you've spoken at Rotary and Toastmasters meetings. And certainly we hope you will attend more and participate in more. The final question, have you participated in a Rotary service project? Again, a Y for yes and an N for no. I have not had the privilege to participate in a Rotary service project, but again, it's my opportunity to contact my local Rotary club and to find out about their service projects and see if not only I can get involved, but members of my club get involved. Steve, how many Ys, how many Ns do we have? So far, there's about eight Ns and one Y that I'm seeing so far. Good. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Collaboration. When you think about the word collaboration, what is a synonym for that word? So type into the chat a synonym. I'm not going to ask you to type an entire definition of collaboration, but I'd like to know what you consider to be a synonym for this word. Please type your answers into the chat. And Steve, as they do that, just share some of them with us. Seeing teamwork, I'm seeing the word understanding, alliance, cooperation, joint effort, empathy, working together, togetherness, association, cooperation yet again. Lots of words coming through. Team, very useful word. Thank you. Partnership. Perfect. Partnership is appearing quite a few times. Thank you. And those are absolutely the synonyms. Thank and it you. is interesting. Someone wrote alliance. And absolutely, alliance is a synonym for collaboration. And that's why we're talking about the Rotary Toastmaster Alliance, or we could also call it the Rotary Toastmaster Collaboration. Here's a definition of collaboration. Collaboration is a process of two or more people, entities, or organizations working together to achieve a common goal. Collaboration can involve sharing ideas, resources, skills, or information. Collaboration can occur in different domains, such as social, business, academic, artistic, or scientific. Our collaboration common goal was to leverage the strengths of both our organizations to provide more opportunities for the members of both our organizations, to leverage our common purposes our complementary mission statements. What is collaborative leadership? I'm not going to ask you to define this, but this is the definition of collaborative leadership. It is a powerful approach that hinges on teamwork, cooperation, and shared responsibility. At its core, it's about leading by involving everyone valuing every team member's input and working collaboratively toward common goals. Collaborative leadership means working closely with all team members, regardless of their title or role. Under collaborative leadership, managers value employee contributions equally and make shared decisions. Leaders who embrace a collaborative leadership style actively encourage team members to share information openly fostering a culture of transparency and knowledge exchange. They emphasize cooperation, open communication, and collective problem solving. The Rotary Toastmasters Alliance required collaborative leadership at all levels of our organization. It began with the board of directors of each organization, the CEOs of each organization, and the staffs to reach an agreement. 
And once an agreement was reached, then we involved the Toastmasters training and development team to develop the courses that we had promised to Rotary in communication and leadership that was to meet the needs of Rotarians and Rotaractors. What are the collaborative leadership skills? In Toastmasters, whenever we talk about leadership, we want to know what skills come with that type of leadership. And these are the skills that come with collaborative leadership. Trust, communication, and transparency. Trust established through open communication, providing autonomy to the team leaders and seeking input. Communication, clearly stating the parameters of projects to be able to gain valuable inputs and feedback from the team. That transparency by providing the necessary information about metrics and goals for employees to make informed decisions based on that data and to be able to lead their teams. And then motivation, delegation, and conflict management. So we all love to be motivated to perform at our best. Of course, motivation needs to come from inside, but it's lovely to have someone like PIP Ted Corcoran say that he loves my minutes. That's motivating to me. Delegating specific tasks as collaborative leaders in order for us to achieve, we have to be good at delegation. Conflict management. Thankfully, I don't know of any conflicts in the Rotary Toastmasters Alliance, but as we all know, sometimes conflicts arise, and when they do, we need to take immediate action to resolve and manage those conflicts. In November 2017, when I was Toastmasters president-elect, the executives of Toastmasters and Rotary met at the Rotary World Headquarters in Evanston, Illinois. As you can see in the picture there, I'm on the left, yes, the short one. Next to me is the General Secretary and CEO of Rotary, John Huco. Next to John is the 2017-2018 President-elect of Rotary, Barry Rasson. Next to Barry Rasson is the Toastmasters CEO, Daniel Rex. Next to Dan is the 2017-2018 Toastmasters International President, Balraj Arunasalam. And next to Balraj was our COO at the time, Sally Newell Cohen. We all met with Rotary executives to discuss a possible Rotary Toastmasters Alliance. Balraj is a member of both Rotary and Toastmasters. He was instrumental in the Rotary Toastmasters Alliance. He is a collaborative leader who had the vision of our alliance and who pursued that vision persistently and persuasively with the executives of both Rotary and Toastmasters. And then, of course, I was the one who benefited from this during my term as president. In January of 2019, three of the executive committee members of Toastmasters and our CEO, Daniel Rex, met with the full board of directors of Rotary to present our vision to the full board. And then it came to fruition in May of 2019. The public launch of our Rotary Toastmasters Alliance came at the Rotary International Convention in Hamburg, Germany in June 2019, when then President Barry Brasson announced it to the entire Rotary Convention attendees. I had the privilege to participate in two sessions during this convention. One was an educational session where we invited members of the audience to come to the stage to practice their impromptu speaking skills. And then I had a small keynote during the convention as well. I learned so much about Rotary during this international convention. I was awed and inspired by the service projects of Rotary members. I am so grateful that Balraj Arunasalam had the vision for the Rotary Toastmasters Alliance. He understood the complementary nature of our visions, our missions. Rotary International, together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change. 
across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves. Toastmasters International, we empower individuals to become more effective communicators and leaders. Both of our organizations empower their members, empower their members to change themselves and in the process to change their worlds. Rotary Toastmasters, organizations with long histories of global impact and proven results in helping people. Rotary, 1.4 million members in 46,000 clubs in 220 countries. Toastmasters, almost 300,000 members in 14,200 clubs in 148 countries. Both Rotary and Toastmasters have their roots in Illinois. Rotary founder Paul Harris started Rotary in 1905 in Chicago, Illinois. Interestingly enough, in that very same year, Ralph C. Smedley, founder of Toastmasters International, held his first unofficial Toastmasters Club meeting in Bloomington, Illinois. He was the educational director for YMCA. During World War I, he worked for the Army, but after World War I, he was hired again by the YMCA. And after moving to Santa Ana, California in 1922 to build their Santa Ana YMCA, after building that structure, two years later in 1924, Ralph Smedley held the first official meeting of Toastmasters International in Santa Ana, California. And this is what happened right before. And I talked with Steve about this. So just wait a moment. I'm going to start us all over again at that slide. I think they just wanted us to see the founders of both organizations for a longer period of time. go past that one. So I think we've seen enough of them. Our leadership structures are similar. We have clubs all the way to the International Board of Directors. The Toastmasters Rotary Alliance was envisioned to leverage the strengths of our organization, to enable our members to enhance their skills, to broaden their networks and to increase the positive impact that we have in our communities. We are continuing to be sure and utilize the Toastmasters Rotary Alliance at the grassroots level. And that's the way that we ensure the success of this alliance is at the grassroots level with local club members working together, connecting, learning from one another and working collaboratively. And as I mentioned, Toastmasters developed 10 courses and those 10 courses are in communication and leadership and they're housed on the Rotary's Learning Center. We encourage Rotarians and Rotaractors to take these courses and then we invite them to attend a Toastmasters meeting, present at that Toastmasters meeting and receive feedback from Toastmasters so that they can improve their communication and leadership skills as Toastmasters do on a regular basis. To summarize the benefits of the Rotary Toastmasters Alliance, for Toastmasters, we get to connect with more and more people. We get to make a difference in our community by collaborating with Rot Rotary clubs. We can take advantage of new speaking and learning opportunities at Rotary clubs. Now for Rotarians and Rotaractors, they have the opportunity to take advantage of 10 communication and leadership courses. They can increase their collective impact by collaborating with Toastmasters and, of course, enhance fellowship and connections with Toastmasters. So what are the benefits to both organizations? Their collaborative opportunities in service, speaking, learning, connections, and the opportunity for dual memberships. 
Let's explore Rotary International a little more. What is Rotary? Rotary is an organization that changes people's lives through their efforts for humanitarian causes. And their number one priority throughout the years has been to eradicate polio. Rotary with their partners has reduced polio by 99.9%. .9%. I would say that they pretty much eradicated polio as their number one priority. But they're involved in so many causes and these are the causes around the world. Members of Rotary can receive grants if their projects fit into any of these categories at the local or the global level. They can submit their projects if they are a part of peace building and conflict prevention, disease prevention and treatment, clean water, sanitation, hygiene, maternal and child health, basic educational literacy, community economic development or environmental protection. So Rotary members can receive global grants if they have projects that will work in these areas. The vision and mission is to provide service to others, promote integrity, and advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace through our fellowship of business, professional, and community leaders. So who are these Rotary members? Well, they are adults who demonstrate good character, integrity, and leadership, have a good reputation within their profession and community, and are willing to serve in their community and around the world. There are actually three types of Rotary Clubs. Rotary Clubs that believe in their commitment to their communities and connecting with their fellow neighbors, friends, and business associates. Rotaract clubs started out to be clubs for younger leaders in the 18 to 30 age range, but it's my understanding that they've dropped the age requirement for Rotaract clubs, so it sounds like even I could join a Rotaract club. And then the Interact clubs, which are for, for individuals age 12 to 18, where they focus on service projects. And Interact clubs must be organized and sanctioned by a Rotary Club. The Rotary Foundation focuses on supporting humanitarian efforts through funding on a local or global level. Over its more than 100 years in operation, they have contributed $4 billion to humanitarian causes. And you see one of those causes right here. This is a teacher in Ghana teaching personal hygiene to her classroom. And this is a part of a $4 million project in Ghana that involves 35 Rotary Clubs, local and national government in Ghana, and also US aid. And it's to provide clean water, sanitation, and personal hygiene to 75,000 people in Ghana. The mission of the Rotary Foundation is to enable Rotarians to advance world understanding, goodwill, and peace through the improvement of health, the support of education, and the alleviation of poverty. This is Rotary. This is the organization with whom we have an alliance. It's an organization that is inspiring in their service projects, and I hope that you will become a part of the collaboration with Rotary. Now let's talk about Toastmasters. Since many of us are Toastmasters, you already know about our organization, but let's review. Toastmasters is an educational organization. It is a 501c3 corporation in the United States of America, and it was founded by Ralph C. Smedley in 1924 in Santa Ana, California. Members are empowered to become effective communicators and leaders. And as a result of that, they gain confidence and they improve their personal and professional lives. 
Who are Toastmasters members? Well, the average age is between 25 and 65. 55% of them are now female. And they are active in for-profit businesses, not-for-profit businesses. Some of them are retired like I am. But I think it's fascinating that 15% of them are in the computer and information technology business, 11% in business and finance, and 10% educators, trainers, and in the library sciences. Like Rotary, our foundation is in our Toastmasters clubs. And our Toastmasters club provide the educational opportunities for our members in the enjoyable environment that Toastmasters are known for. We also have gavel clubs. So like Rotary's Interact clubs, we have gavel clubs for our youth. Gavel clubs are also a part of our prison outreach as well. But I want to introduce you to Angina Arvind. She is the 2024 International Gavel Speech Contest winter, winner on a global level. There are three elements to our Toastmasters program that empower our individuals to become more effective communicators and leaders. And the first element of that is our structured curriculum. We know it as the Pathways Digital Curriculum. It is customized for the individual. The individual chooses a path of learning, a curriculum path, and they tailor that path and the projects to what they want to learn, to their goals and learning. It's experiential learning in Toastmasters through the Pathways Structured Curriculum. The second element is practice. Practice is vital to the six, our success in Toastmasters and in life. When we think about interviewing for a job, most companies want us to have experience in that job. That's called practice in that role. And we have practice at every Toastmasters meeting. The Toastmaster of the day practices productive meeting leadership. Then the speakers practice their speaking skills. In table topics, we practice our impromptu skills. Our evaluators practice their productive evaluation skills. Throughout our meetings, we are practicing our skills. But in order to improve our skills, we have to receive constructive feedback. And this is the evaluation portion of a Toastmasters meeting, the third element of success in a Toastmasters meeting. Feedback. I love Bill Gates' quote. We all need people who will give us feedback. That's how we improve. And that's exactly right. So as speech evaluators, we learn how to give that positive, supportive, constructive feedback. We want our members to continue in Toastmasters for a lifetime. And in order for them to do that, they need to receive that constructive feedback that will help them improve in their speaking and leadership skills. Not only do we have the speech evaluators during our meetings, but we have a general evaluator who evaluates the entire meeting and how well it's been conducted throughout and also comments on the various role players and how well they did their job. Not only do we have speakers, table topics, impromptu speaking and speech evaluations, but we also have an awe counter and word provider of the day, a grammarian, a timer to keep us on track. And the general evaluator will tell us how well we've accomplished each of these. Toastmasters proven results. We want to become more effective communicators and leaders. We want to become accomplished speakers. We want to become confident leaders. We want to gain new competencies. And in the Toastmasters Pathways program, there are five main competencies, but over 300 ancillary competencies that we can learn in the Toastmasters Pathways program. All of this results in personal and professional growth. My husband was a member of Toastmasters and he 
received personal growth from Toastmasters. He was already a good speaker. He became a great speaker in Toastmasters, but he said that Toastmasters gave him the personal confidence to interact in social settings where he had not felt comfortable. The ability to conduct productive meetings. Have you ever attended a non-productive meeting? I certainly have, and Toastmasters shares with us and gives us the opportunity to practice those productive meeting skills. Like the Rotary Foundation, Toastmasters has a foundation as well, and it's called the Smedley Fund. And it is named in honor of our founder, Dr. Ralph C. Smedley. It is for the advancement of communication and leadership education through research, development, and distribution of education materials. How can you get involved? How can you collaborate? We've talked about several of the opportunities, but let's get into more specifics, shall we? You can participate in Rotary Service Projects. So contact your local Rotary Club and ask them about their service project. Ask them how you can get involved. Ask them if they need more people and then share with the members of your club. There are 10 courses, five in communication, five in leadership that are based on the Toastmasters Pathway Program, but have been honed to the specific needs of Rotary members. These are the five communication courses that Toastmasters developed for Rotary. Communication skills, develop a speech, deliver a speech, the inspirational speech, interpersonal communication and networking. So Toastmasters, you can contact your local Rotary Club and ask if any of their members need to speak at a Toastmasters Club and receive feedback on their speech that has been a part of their development through the communication courses on the Rotary Learning Center. So I encourage you to contact the Rotary Club both to attend to ask them about Rotary members who would like to speak at your Toastmasters Club and to participate in their service projects. Then there are also five leadership courses that Toastmasters has developed for Rotary. Leadership basics, leadership skills, leading a team, collaboration, and building consensus. Again, if Rotary members would like to share their leadership journey as a speech, at a Toastmasters meeting and receive feedback? Obviously, we would welcome that. So you may ask them that as well. Toastmasters is known for our blended learning approach. And we did this within the courses that we developed for Rotary as well. Every course has a self-assessment at the beginning, and then there's independent study, and like Pathways, there are instructional videos that the Rotary members will see. Then they have assignments like we do in the Pathways Learning Experience for Toastmasters members. And finally, there is a self-evaluation, but we also encourage Rotary members to attend a Toastmasters meeting and receive verbal and written feedback from a Toastmaster. There are cross-training opportunities, and this is one of the collaborations that is happening around the globe. Rotary clubs and districts are inviting Toastmasters to prepare seminars for them. And one of the seminars that they've asked for is public speaking. And that is happening in districts of Rotary around the world. But again, the Rotary Club might want you to give a presentation on public speaking and leadership skills. Have you attended a Rotary Club meeting if you're a Toastmaster? If you're a Rotary member, have you attended a Toastmasters meeting? There's an opportunity for us to do so. Rotary can be invited to speak at a Toastmasters meeting. Rotary, you can invite a Toastmaster to speak at your Rotary meetings. So we hope that Toastmasters and Rotary will take advantage of the speaking opportunities for both 
Rotary members, and Toastmasters. Invite Toastmasters to participate in Rotary service projects. Develop cross-mentor pairs, and I thought this was an excellent recommendation. If a Rotary member wants to pair with a Toastmaster to improve their communication and leadership skills, why not? And vice versa, if a Toastmaster wants to pair with a Rotary member in community involvement and learning about their service projects and then participating in them, why not? And then we can always hold joint social and networking events. So plan one for your local Rotary Club if you're a Toastmasters Club. And if you are a Rotary Club, plan one and invite Toastmasters. And then finally, please, please consider joint Rotary Toastmasters membership. I will be giving a copy of these slides to District 71. And one of the reasons is that there are links to resources within this PowerPoint slide deck. And one of those is examples of local collaboration. And this is fascinating. I simply picked the one associated with United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom, Rotary members are organizing a bike ride with participants from all over the world to help the Rotary Action Group Against Slavery raise awareness of their cause. They're using the Toastmasters curriculum and collaborating with local Toastmasters members along the route to increase the effectiveness of the message. This was inspiring to me. One of my favorite Ralph Smedley quotes is, understanding comes through communication, and through communication, we find the way to peace. Does that sound like one of the causes of Rotary? And then Paul Harris, Rotary changes us and those we serve. I believe we can change the world one life at a time. I certainly believe that Rotary has changed the world one life at a time. And I believe that we do the same in Toastmasters. And in Toastmasters, we change one life at a time so that our members can change our world. The links to the Toastmasters Alliance, Toastmasters Rotary Alliance information is on both the rotary.org website and the toastmasters.org website. It has been an honor to talk to you today about the Rotary and Toastmasters Alliance, where we are changing lives and changing our world collaboratively. I want to end by thanking my golden chat master, Steve Campion, and to Elizabeth Jordan for inviting me to speak today. Thank you very much indeed, Madam Past International President Lark. That was a fascinating presentation. I've learned a lot. I have various friends who are members of Rotary and I've learned a lot more about the organisation. I've actually learned something about Toastmasters as well. So thank you very much for that indeed. Thank you also to everyone who's been sending me questions as Lark has been sharing the story and the history of the Rotary and the Toastmasters Alliance, the history of both organisations and how we can work together collaboratively. I've also noticed that we have our current international president in our midst, Morag Matheson. So welcome, Morag. Thank you for taking the time to come and see us today. I'll go straight into the questions that we've had because we've had quite a lot. Apologies if we don't have a chance to get through all of them, but thank you for sharing everything. One question that I found really intriguing is, Lark, you talked about the history of the Alliance, how it started, how it started with some conversations and then built. And it seems that it came together really very quickly. What would you say helped that happen for that Alliance to come together so quickly? If I gave you that impression, my apologies. I will tell you that Balraj Arunasalam was persistent and persuasive. And he began talking with Rotary executives, I think probably a few years before it actually came to fruition. And then of course he talked with Daniel Rex 
at Toastmasters International about it as well. And then, of course, we all got together in November 2017 at the Rotary World Headquarters. But it took some years. We'd have to ask Balraj exactly how many years. And of course, I'm not sure when he had the vision, so that may have started even earlier than he took action, but he was persistent and persuasive and definitely a collaborative leader. And I just, I'm so grateful to him for truly bringing this alliance to fruition. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that because I think you make a very interesting point. I remember reading one, someone says that overnight successes are never overnight successes. And you highlight there that it takes time. It takes time to build relationships. It takes time to build these collaborations. And I'm sure within Rotary and within Toastmasters, we'll see that. It takes time for clubs to get to know each other. On, on which point it moves us to another question. You've given us some great advice on how Rotarians can make contact with Toastmasters, how Toastmasters can make contact with Rotarians. Do you have any specific examples of where you've seen this collaboration at club level working well? Well, absolutely. So, and we've got several examples of this on the Toastmasters website and, of course, on the Rotary website. And I know that PIP Ted Corcoran is here, and he might be able to comment on some of those as well. But absolutely, we've had Toastmasters who have been members of Rotary and have then done, as I said, and they'll hold communication, public speaking, seminars, webinars in order to encourage them, obviously, to improve their speaking skills. There are members of both organizations that have literally formed a Toastmasters Club of Rotary members in order to support those members in improving their communication and leadership skills. And literally, it starts out certainly as only members of Rotary being a member of those Toastmasters clubs. I assume they open it up later, but bottom line is absolutely. We've had members of both organizations who have seen a need for it and have then either had those joint meetings or have held seminars, webinars for the members of both organizations. I have participated in several Rotary meetings, and like this one, I've participated in Rotary meetings that involve Toastmasters as well. So I've had the privilege to participate in those, but I will tell you that the website that I will give you the link to literally talks about the collaborations. And in fact, I could click on those and give you even more, but I shared with you the one in the United Kingdom, but there are so many collaborations around the world that involve Toastmasters and Rotary. That's wonderful. Thank you. And you remind me, one of the questions that did actually come through in the chat was from someone who wants to share this story, share your presentation with Rotarians and members of their Rotary Club. So thank you for sharing it with us. I will point out that our wonderful district PR team is going to take this video, put it on our district YouTube channel so that other people can see it. And we'll include those links with that as well. So thank you very much, Lark, for sharing those with us. On which point, I will mention, it's not a question, but it's a comment from someone who is here who said that they are a member of an organization called Star Toastmasters, serving Toastmasters and Rotary, a club that is specifically set up to help Toastmasters and Rotary come together and collaborate. So thank you very much for that person for being here and for sharing that, yes, that story about exactly that uh, collaboration you're talking about. Actually, if I move to another question related to leadership, actually, you talked about the development programs that Toastmasters has developed for Rotary and that Toastmasters has learned from Rotary. Can you share with us a little bit of insight about how the leadership development program and the leadership development process works in Rotary and in Toastmasters and how they compare? Wow, that's an excellent question. And do you know, since I'm not a Rotary member, I've not taken the leadership courses. So what I'd like to ask is, has anyone who's in our audience today taken the leadership courses offered by Rotary? I can tell you what I would expect, but I have not taken the leadership courses in Rotary. Has anyone present today done so? 
And if not, I should text a friend of mine and tell him to get on the line here. Absolutely. If anyone <laughs> wants to raise a virtual hand and contribute, <laughs> they are very welcome. So what I would expect is just like in Toastmasters, we learn by doing. So I would expect that they take the courses and then they apply the leadership lessons learned in leading their service projects. So that would be my expectation of the leadership courses in Rotary is that truly they would take the leadership curriculum and then apply that leadership curriculum to the service projects that they lead. Thank you. And I, I do know that our own district director, Elizabeth Jordan, is a member of both, as is Joan Heels and, as has been mentioned, past international president, Ted Corcoran. So if any of those would like to contribute to that comment. I'm a member of STAR, which is a ah. Toastmasters club that consists of Rotarians and Toastmasters. And I know Dr. Joan Heels is also in today's audience. Um, I believe she may be Rotarian, she can correct me if I'm wrong, but she's also a member of that club. And what is um, good about it is we focus mainly on the Toastmaster aspect, but we're there to you know, work on the leadership, the communication, but we have both Rotarians and um, Toastmasters. So Dr. Heels, if you want to say a comment, we'd appreciate your input. If I don't want to put you under pressure, but if you wish to say a few words, please do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Steve. Did you address them to, to me? Did you, District Director? Yes. Uh, we'd be delighted to have a, a few words from you, uh, PIP Ted. Well, I've been a Rotarian since 1991. I've been the club president. I've been an area director, etc. Our club has 50 members. And I think that um, they're all older than, than the average and express very little interest in getting further tuition in public speaking. And I'm not, uh, there are four members of my club, three and myself are members of the Rotary Club. So the move seems to be from Toastmasters to Rotary rather than from Rotary to Toastmasters. And, uh, but two things that, that strike me about meetings generally in Rotary, not just my own club, is parliamentary procedure is uh, something they can't even spell, not a mind operate. So that's a huge thing that we have in Toastmasters about how to, how to run meetings properly. And the other, the other one is the, uh, is the communication. Uh, we, have, we have 40 Mondays in the year where we have a guest speaker from the outside world. And they're, they're usually the head of this or the head of that, or they, or they have. And to a man or a woman, <laughs> they're just awful because they haven't got the basic idea of a structure with a purpose and, an, and, and, and a message. And they just ramble on and ramble on and they're as wise at the end as we are at the start. So there's a fantastic need for Toastmasters out there. But when I started my work club way back in oh, the middle nineties now, I suppose, we had all the, the, the lower grades joining up. Uh, we had one person from the middle grade but nobody from the upper grade because they probably felt it was beneath them to think they needed they needed uh, advice. So what, what was happening was they were confident. They weren't afraid to speak, but they didn't realize that when they were speaking, they were making no sense, <laughs> if you follow. So, so yeah, it's uh, I've been watching it at my club now for all those years, and not one single person has joined Toastmasters as yet, but they're they're retired business people. They're not into that sort of well, we must learn more because we need we need it. Uh, that's my comment. Thank you. Th thank you very much for sharing that insight and that wonderful experience. As you say, it's interesting how different people are motivated by different things and how the both organisations are helping people develop in different ways and helping people develop their skills. I feel hey, like I might. Comment. Please. 
about that. So one of the reasons that we make the learning curriculum available to both Rotary members and Rotaractors is to engage the younger Rotary members. So it was interesting at the beginning of this alliance, we thought we were going to make the curriculum just available to Rotary members. And then, of course, their learning center is open to both. And so we wanted them to encourage Rotaractors, which, as I said, are originally started out being the 18 to 30 year olds. And now it's my understanding that a member can be of any age. But so we are hoping that we engage the Rotaractors who are more interested in learning at that time because they're younger and they're just getting active in their careers. So we hope that they will take advantage of these 10 courses. Thank you very much. Can, I, I, think add one, can I add one other thing so that we don't let Lark leave with the idea that the first, the first uh, connection between Rotary and Toastmasters is at a function at a dinner in England, and I was sitting beside the world president of Rotary. I think his name was Wilkinson, and he was from somewhere east of Toronto in Ontario. And he was really excited about it. And I went to Toastmasters International and told them, look, we're we're ready, and and they they were getting ready then for fourteen years until Relac came along. <laughs> but but that was the first intimation that there was an interest between the two organisations, two thousand and three, two thousand and four, one of those years. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you. And I, I see the red light from the timer. So thank you, Ted, for sharing that. It brings us full circle, actually, to the question we had at the beginning, which was how quickly it all came together. And the answer is, it sounds like all of these things take time. <laughs> we all need to invest time in learning from each other. With that, I would like to say thank you very much, Lark. Oh, I'm going to hand over to someone in a moment to thank you properly. But before I do that, I would also like to recognise and thank Jenny Chalmers, who's been our timer, and Nick Collins, who's been our Zoom master this evening, helping mm. us bring everything together. I would now like to hand over to Sue Burnett, our district PR manager, for the vote of thanks. Sue. Thank you. Um, our master of ceremony, Steve, and admin support for District 71. It is my absolute pleasure to be giving a vote of thanks this evening to none other than past international president, Lark Doley. And she has truly given us a fantastic evening. And I've absolutely loved her energy, her enthusiasm, and bringing her graciousness to this meeting and sharing with us how we can learn from others that are similar to us. And I want to thank her for all of the inspiration that she's brought to us this evening. And it's also reminded me, I have given a speech at at least two Rotarian clubs before this alliance started, which... I completely forgotten about. <laughs> mm. So now I know I have got some connections with the Rotary, perhaps it's time to build those. And I've learned that those of us that have not actually ventured out into the world of Rotarians have got a massive opportunity. And we thank you so much for this wonderful presentation of showing us how we can work together and combine our skills and move it forwards into the future to build a beautiful relationship. So let's put our hands together to truly thank past international president, Lark Doley. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Sue. And with that, I would like to once again, thank everyone for being here, especially to our distinguished guests and our wonderful presenter, Lark Doley. I hope to see you again at another Sunday leadership webinar and please make the most of the leadership collaboration opportunities. Thank you. Well, and can, I, can I say, Steve, you don't have to wait. We don't have to wait for um, PIP, um, PIP Lark to come to us. She's always speaking around the world. So just keep your eyes on Facebook. I know she's doing a speech next week or the week after. So she's always speaking around the world. So if we want to see her, we know where to go and find her. But yes, we do hope to see you back in District 71 in the not too distant future. So I thanks, am. everyone. Thank you.
Thank you yeah. for inviting me.